Wait, isn't that the girl from Vogue? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, is that is that the hundred these Valkyrie? Wait, hold on, one second. One second, that's crazy. Wait, what? What a big get. This is a big get for the Hostel Diver broadcast, guys. This is seven page. It's not even a. Th it's not even a one page, two page. Wait, how many pages is it? Seven. Seven page spread in Vogue Philippines. Pinoy Gang's very own. Rachel 100T Valkyrie Hofstetter in the building? What the fuck? The Filipina American live streaming okay, icon. Pause, is pause, pause, pause. Are you pausing? Pause, pause. You're I pausing have to pause me you. in yes. real life. You're, there's an Can IRL pause. Can we talk about his stupid comment yesterday? What? He can't just be like, oh my God, Ray, I'm proud of you. Or, oh my God, Ray, you're so pretty. Can't say that. He said, Swagapino activity. What do you mean? That's what it is. It's way cooler than saying some Swagapino basic. Like, activity. yeah, you want me to? You want me to tweet like I'm Austin? You are iconically yeah, look gorgeous. At, look at Austin can see or Brooke, that. you're everything. Congratulations, Queen. Instead, nobody's out there defending Swagapinos. Okay, <laughs> like that's. I I think that this is literally the right thing. What this is the right swag. I couldn't even reply. I didn't even know what to say. Yeah, I was I originally going to say Pinoy Gang, which. I don't know. I should have said Pinoy Gang. Uh, we were watching a video on Disney adults, but let's look at a, a different video instead. Let's get to the dog content. Tibetan Mastiff, the pros and cons of owning one. Name itself, the Tibetan Mastiff was created centuries ago in Tibet. During those times, they were used as guard dogs for livestock and property. While some families still <laughs> use them for the same purpose, today, they're also used as family companions and show dogs. For today's video, we'll talk about the pros and cons of He's owning one of these dogs. Perhaps the very first thing that you may notice oh about these dogs God. is their massive... Like, oh my like God. Two point. One, You're, what's it at? Oh my, you are literally, one, you are the chatter. 1. You are 1. the... 1.15, 1.15. Okay. Size. It's yeah. perfect. 1.15 yeah. shouts out perfect. the Shouts out to Ray. What, gotta be one of my least favorite chatters, the chatter types on the list. I'm Can not gonna out? lie. You the having a kayak don't cam them. makes me watch longer actually helps smart however behind their big bodies is a dog with a soft heart towards their humans while they may still be protected in nature these dogs tend to be affectionate <laughs> towards the people that they love later on we'll get to know more about these wonderful dogs to know if they suit your lifestyle hi there and welcome to animal insider if you're new to our channel make sure to subscribe what if it's first. not a tibetan mastiff then we go back to the yeah, drawing board the, baby the DNA test coming oh turns out i gave it in immediately after getting the dna test done mm -hmm. and embarkvet.com responded to me and said oh yeah you want to know when you get it back uh never no they literally were like they've only sent me more fucking ads since i since i set it up but just turn the ads off Oh, they just here. I listen. Just you just re at what? the bottom. It'll say stop getting the emails. Like okay. This. Regardless, you want to know? It says breed ID test pro processing results will be ready by late May. <laughs> Can they hear her right now? I don't think so. Where's Kaya Cam? Well, uh, it's for your that daily dose of, of dog-related contents. It? As mentioned earlier. For today's video, back we'll there, talk but all I can't, about the pros and cons move it around, of Tibetan so Mastiff. We can't have it so on without further ado, let's begin. Pros. One, Tibetan Mastiffs are natural born guardians. One of the biggest benefits of having this dog around you is that once you're able to gain their trust, they will be loyal around you and will protect you until the end. It is true that they will not be as playful as other dogs, but their natural instinct and capability Wait, to protect you and your property is a unique attribute that not all dog breeds have. What? Two. Tibetan Mastiffs make excellent companions of elders. With their traits as loyal, faithful, and natural protectors, Tibetan Mastiffs are highly recommended for elderly people as protective companions. Because they are vigilant dogs, they can give the best protection that not all dog breeds can provide. As a matter of fact, their presence alone is enough to make intruders think twice before entering the property. I don't Aside care about any of this. I want dogs, playfulness. They're also quiet and not too active, <laughs> which again makes them a perfect match for Yeah, they aren't not too active, except they are fucking insanely active right now when they're a puppy. Three, Tibetan Mastiffs are not regular shedders. While they... Yeah, that's right. Let's go. Uh, when I are you going to... When are you going to evolve Kaya? Kind of getting bored of her puppy face. First of all, how dare you? Secondly, it takes some time, okay? It's not Pokemon out here. 
But when I do evolve her, I'm gonna make sure she's a Vaporeon build. Still do shed. Tibetan Mastiffs Why? are not constant shedders. This means that they require less. Uh, I don't know. I think it's like a, the most majestic one, and I can use her as a floaty in the pool. Like she so pure. What do you never heard about Vaporeon? <laughs> He doesn't know. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, why would you even think that? Well, I don't no. know. Maybe I'm broken. I know the fucking. I don't know. No. Oh, my God. I'm sorry that I don't have fucking encyclopedia knowledge of internet copy pastas. No, you guys are, I'm surprised you're this fucked up. <laughs> I, chat, it makes sense. No, you want to know what's actually fucked up? What? This morning at the airport at 6.30 a.m. Uh-huh. I'm getting ready to go onto my flight. And I get recognized by this guy. Flex. And he comes up to me. He's, he's like, like, damn, is oh that is that Valkyrie from it's the Vogue? Early. From the Vogue 7 pager? What? It's Ow. early. 6.30 a.m. It's a violation. Comes, I don't have makeup on. I'm chilling. I didn't think I would get recognized. He comes up and he's like, oh, are you a YouTuber, right? Yeah, I am. He goes, oh, I recognize you from that clip where Kai Sinat is talking about your age. I was like, I want to die. This is life after 30. Literally life after 30. Okay, why are you wired? This oh. is when he finds out how old I am. <laughs> you pull that up so fast. And Came up immediately. Valkyrie got a, this Valkyrie got a, got a, got a. Valkyrie's guy. actually like super nice, bro. She's actually like a really, really cool. This was before Aiden Ross became a fucking yeah, massive before... shithead. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, I, bro, yes. like she, she followed me the other day. Came... Watch out. You might get copy striked. Aiden Ross has appeared in one of your videos. It's a butt on my stomach. <laughs> She's very, um, you know what's crazy? She doesn't even look her age. Can you guess how old she is? How old is she? She's 30, bro. 31, actually. I love this. Yo, this is so What? 30. <laughs> what? 30. I can't stand listening to oh, my own laugh. I love oh, this cringe. clip. Bro, he's got to stop pulling out that shit, bro. I mean, it's just really giving me some real PTSD. What the f you say to me? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa there. Whoa. <laughs> this has 24 million views. This is your fault that people have seen it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Also, there's nothing uh, wrong with being 30 no, years old. No, no. 30 is not old. Copium. It's not. I mean, actually, it's old. copium. It's, it's not. old. It but really like, there's nothing wrong with being old. It's not. Okay? It really isn't. Actually, it isn't. There's nothing wrong with being old. No. That's the way I see it. It's not. It's not bad. It's just, you know, when you're on the internet. And also, you look like you're... 20 so there's that i, I definitely look i look at least old 28 i look old that's the difference like you don't, you don't look old i think you looked much older when you had your full beard and your long hair i think you cutting your hair and shaving your beard maybe dropped you by like 15 years <laughs> Okay. okay, let's continue. Grooming compared to other dog breeds, they blow their coats once a year, so you may need to brush them more often during these times. Other than that, this breed is relatively easy to groom. Four, Tibet. So uh, yeah, weird. look at this is Hoscord. Ray being 30, Swooner. Hassan being 30, Boomer. <laughs> nice. I mean, it is like that. Mastiffs though. are easy to potty train. <laughs> what? Although Tibetan Mastiffs are quite a challenge to train, many owners find it easy to housebreak them. Of course, the very first thing that you need to do in order to successfully train your dog is to earn their trust. Since they are not easily trusting of humans, these dogs need an experienced, firm, and strong leader who can provide them the leadership that they need. Five, Tibetan Mastiff. Okay. Okay, this is fucked up. Wait, am I not a firm and strong leader? What the fuck is this? Gaia! I think she's just not a Tibetan Mastiff, that's why. I know she knows how to sit. I taught her that. Eh, eh, no. Come here. 
Okay, she, you're just flexing now. You're just flexing. You can't. They can't even see. They can't even see. But. Okay, I'm starting to get jealous. Leave. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. This treacherous bitch. Oh my god. Oh my god. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? She's like, no, no, I want off. I don't want I want off this ride. That's what she's saying. <laughs> the little fucking pause. God, you hurt my feelings, ma'am. I I'm a little jealous. I really I should have gotten a male dog. I fucked up. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Hurt people. Hurt people. If are healthy dogs, in general. Well-bred Tibetan Mastiffs are considered as healthy Ray's dogs. Ray's not muted. While they may still suffer from some health conditions, it is not as much as compared to other dog breeds. If you're considering this dog, some of the health problems that you need to look out for include hip and elbow. Hip and elbow dysplasia and droopy eyes. Okay, I know. I've seen this. Hold on. Here, I'll just take off the noise gear real quick. One second. What was it? Roadcaster Pro. No, 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 no. It's just like, I just need to take off the noise gate. Fuck it. Here you go. You're dysplasia, uh, unlimited eye no problems, and oh, yeah. hypothyroidism. If you're buying a dog, it is important to purchase from a reputable breeder to ensure that you get a healthy dog that can live for a long time. Six, the Tibetan Mastiff's no, appearance is enough to deter intruders. As mentioned earlier, this breed is Fuck. huge in size. Hold on. Is it off? What's this? What's this? What's this? What is that? Why, why, what, what's going on there? Hmm. I wonder why. It must be Austin. <laughs> Fucking up that door. Okay, Big is it working? I don't know what happened, but it's Austin's fault. Yeah, no, totally. Look at her. They can't even see how cute she's being. I'll show, I'll show with the Kaya cam. New Kaya cam. Uh, not even a new one, but. Oh, she stopped. She She's like, she knew. Kaya! 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 Kaya, come here! Come here! <laughs> Kaya! <laughs> Hello. Hello. Ow. Look at her chomping. There she goes. She's so goofy. Oh, she did pee. She did? Where? So, unless that's just slobber, but I'm pretty sure. No, she definitely peed right there. Oh, Fuck. Right there. Okay, I. you know she's like still. Okay, well, I guess I haven't right? fucking earned her trust. They also have an imposing look. This alone is enough to keep intruders away from your property. However, if they're persistent enough to enter your home, then they must be seriously looking for trouble as this breed won't back down to threats and dangers. Seven, Tibetan Mastiffs it's can get there. along with other pets. <laughs> they may be massive dogs, but Tibetan Mastiffs are actually easygoing animals who can get along well with other pets in the house, provided that they are socialized at an early age. This is especially true if they are raised together. When they see unfamiliar dogs, it is common for your Tibetan Mastiff to show their dominance at first. After all, they were bred to protect. With proper no, supervision, I will not piss they on will you. calm down in no time. Eight, Tibetan Mastiffs are excellent family dogs. I don't know why I read that. Provided that they are properly trained and socialized <laughs> early, you won't have a problem keeping this dog in your home, even if you have younger family members. As with all dog breeds, it is important to watch your dog closely whenever they interact with children. He's just currently to make sure asking her why happen. she peed. As with Tibetan Mastiffs, they will enjoy having close relationships even with children. So far, what do you think about Tibetan Mastiffs? Do you think they'll fit just right into your home? Or is their personality too strong for you to handle? Let us know your thoughts later on, because for now, we'll continue getting to know more about these dogs. So, without further ado, let's continue. Cons. One, Tibetan Mastiff must be kept on. Pause. All right, I know you guys want to learn so much about the Tibetan Mastiff, the pros and cons of owning one. 
But I think this is a good time to go over what scary game Hassan should play today. So I have five options. And I think we need to eliminate one or actually I have six options. So I feel like I need to eliminate two of them so that we could do a poll so you guys can pick which one. All of, all of these are about 1.5, 30 minutes to 1.5 hours long. So the first one is called The Toilet Chronicles, which is about a uh, toilet escape room thing. Um, it's about 1.5 hours long. And I, I've never played this uh, this before, so I think it'd be kind of good. It's supposed to be comedic, escape the toilet room. Um, and then there's Bon Bon, which I've been interested in. What do you mean that one? You haven't even heard the other options. Bon Bon, I th it's 30 minutes long. I think you role play as a baby and it's traumatic. And then there's the closing shift, which I've played before, which is 1.5 hours. The convenience store, which I've played before. We don't have time for any of these. Hush. Well, I'm just saying. How dare you get all of our hopes up? Anyways, one late night is one hour, and then there's a game called I'm Scared that's one hour. <sighs> the 30 minute one. That's true. So we just add an extra hour to all of these times because he's probably going to stall. I do, I am curious about the toilet one as well. Which is the scariest? Um, the game called I'm Scared. You can't be disappointed in her for relieving her bladder. Uh, the I'm scared one, apparently they the game puts actual stuff in your computer files. <laughs> oh my god. Come here. Stop. Might be a little spooky. Yeah. The toilet one? Okay. Let's see the trailers. I'm afraid to touch his computer. So maybe when he gets back, he can pull it up. It's just very overwhelming. He has chat visible on all three of his monitors, which is deranged. Literally chat here, there, and right there. And then it's, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 plus tabs open. It's really um very overwhelming desktop. His keyboard is disgusting. Very gross. Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like he should do like a keyboard cleaning stream. What? Um, nothing. What did you, you say? Huh? What? No. What I'm are just, you saying? We're talking about your setup. Exposed? Wait, what? I was just talking about the condition of your keyboard. Oh, yeah. My keyboard's uh, nasty. I know. It's gross. I was Everybody knows that, though. You should clean it. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Show Ray how you got adopted by the worst weebs on TikTok. What the fuck? Wait, what is this? Wow. Wait, what? Why am I? Bro, what is the? I did not consent to be in this. I'm about to fucking pull an Aiden Ross and copy strike this shit. That was terrible. I liked it. <laughs> that was fucking awful. Why'd you guys do that? Number one. 
having been existing for centuries, Tibetan Mastiffs are nomadic dogs. This means that they will most likely wander <laughs> around when you keep them off leash. Therefore, if you take them out for a walk, you must keep them on leash. It is also important to ensure that your yard, if you have one, is securely fenced to avoid them from running away from your home. 2. Tibetan True? Mastiff can be aggressive. Because they do have a strong temperament and can be aggressive during confrontational situations, it is vital for Tibetan Mastiffs to receive proper training as well as early socialization. These tend to especially be aggressive toward another dog of the same sex. 3. Tibetan Mastiff can be difficult to train. Oh, I know. Tibetan Mastiff. Except, like, they said uh, easy to potty train, which I don't agree are with. They are intelligent, but they are highly independent dogs, which makes <laughs> training a challenge. They may know what you're trying to say, but they will not listen to your commands just because they don't feel like it. This is especially true if they don't trust <gasps> you as the leader of the too. pack. With that said, Tibetan Mastiffs need a strong, firm, and patient owner who can when provide them with the kind of training that they need. These dogs, like all other dog breeds, when uh, Kaya gets vaccinated, thrive on positive reinforcement I'm going to get her techniques. vaccinated tomorrow. Therefore, it'll be really helpful if you give them But break. there's still more, um, like the first round of vaccines. I'll ask, I'll ask the vet. ...and plenty of playtime as a reward for their good behavior. Never use harsh punishments, such as yelling and hitting, <laughs> to train your dog, as it will only reduce their self-confidence, which may lead to shyness or aggression. 4. Tibetan Mastiffs can be vocal and messy. Tibetan Mastiffs like to express their emotions with their voice, so you may hear them frequently barking or howling. As huge dogs, their loud and strong voices may disturb your neighbors if you live close to them. With that said, this breed does not make a good choice if you live in a home with noise restrictions, or if you simply prefer a quiet breed. Tibetan Mastiffs will bark excessively if they are bored, or if you keep them in a closed space for a long time. Aside from being loud, this breed is also known to be slobbers. At home, you may find drool all over the floor after they have a meal or a drink. Has she been drooling? Five. No. Tibetan Mastiffs. But they're not easily enticed by food. This part is like kind of true, I think. Even at eight weeks, like she doesn't really give a fuck about treats all that much. Are not easily enticed by food. Unlike most dogs, Tibetan man. Bro, what the fuck? Please listen to Alex G. Who is Alex G, man? You've been saying this all day. Hassan, can you listen to Alex G? Please listen to Alex G. I need to know what you think about his music. Please listen to Alex G, bro. Hassan, please listen to Alex G. Hassan, please listen to Alex G. Well, who the fuck is Alex G, bro? Stop. Mastiffs are hard to reward with treats. Said no. They're not commonly motivated no. by food. I'm saying stop. So you need to explore and be creative to learn as to which reward they best to respond to. Man. Remember, only use positive reinforcement techniques when training your positive dog. Positive reinforcement Six, techniques. Tibetan <laughs> Mastiffs are extremely <laughs> territorial dogs. Positive Having a protective dog is a good thing. However, That's how he said it. <laughs> what? This guy is giving you an informative video. He is. About Tibetan killing it. This is Alex G. Fun of his voice. This is Alex G, by the way. This is the person. Shouts out to Alex G, one of my favorite YouTubers. When does it go bad? A dog, regardless of the dog breed and temperament, can be dangerous when he is not properly trained and socialized. A dog that doesn't know how to act in different situations can be a threat wow, to strangers and other animals. Dog. With Tibetan Mastiffs being extremely territorial and protective dogs, they can be a danger to other people and animals if they're not raised properly. Therefore, it is very important to consider your capability in handling these dogs before owning one. 7. Tibetan Mastiffs are not for every household. In order for you to successfully raise and bring home a Tibetan Mastiffs, there are certain factors that you need to consider first. One of these is their exercise <laughs> needs. Although Tibetan Mastiffs don't require a huge amount of exercise, you have to be extra careful not to overexert them while they're still young. If you do, your dog may suffer from several anatomical problems. Another thing you need to consider is that because they were bred to adapt- <gasps> That looks like Kaya. She's floofier. In colder yeah, climates, is... these dogs oh are not suited God. to live in warm environments. It is best that you take them out for a walk when it's not too hot out. So I think, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I think I, I think that she's like not full to it. To it mass. Such as early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Also, I, I, I never thought I never I never thought that she was full anyway, but like I, I don't know how what percentage she is is what I'm yeah. saying. Like I don't know. Water with you. To summarize, here are the important things that you need to consider when you want to take home a Tibetan Mastiff. First is that they only shed once a year, which makes them a great companion for those who don't have enough time for grooming. Second, they are healthy they dogs with only minimal health problems. They're yeah, what's up? Right. 
Also loyal, Play smart, and independent dogs stuff. that are capable of protecting you and your property. And despite their you strong temperament, I mean. these dogs will get along well with children and other pets, so long as they are raised properly. And that ends our video for today. Do you think you're ready to own a Tibetan Mastiff? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down. Aww. She's outside right now. You want to bring her inside? Yeah, she just she's just chilling. Yeah, she just roams. I I, I have to let her roam. How is she not ever gonna be trained? No, I I she peed, so she's allowed to be uh, outside. She might be under the hedges. The new thing is she, oh, I forgot to mention this in the pup date, but the new thing is she actually figured out how to go up the stairs. So now, so now she's like up, the, she goes up the stairs and, and to my bedroom sometimes. Wait, one more. Oh my God. You're not alone. I just had a heart attack. <laughs> okay, what you, I told I you. Out there. I told. I yelled. You didn't hear me. It's, I said she's under the hedges. She hides under there. Which is, I just never look under hedges because that's something Mika would never do. Mika. Uh, ne Come on. Yeah, she she likes. Oh my gosh! You guys have a lot of trust for an eight, barely eight week old puppy. Yeah, it's fine. Um, Alex G got a light seven from. God save the animals. That's my take on it. Oh, I don't God. listen to music. I only listen to Anthony Fantano listen to music. Puppies may not walk the stairs. No, like it's it is a it is a danger uh, actually. Like she's she's like runs up the stairs now. She can't go down though. <laughs> <laughs> but she only knows how to go up the stairs, which is, you know, these are big ass stairs too. So I'm like shocked. I didn't even know she was able to. She was a little fearful at first, but, you know, it's taken, like, seven fucking days for her to, like, overcome her fears of the stairs. Alex G isn't just music, though. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know who fucking Alex G is. Please, Alex, get the fuck out of here. Okay? That's what the G stands for. <coughs> I don't care. <coughs> I don't. <coughs> Stop. What is this Alex G psyop up in here? What the fuck is happening? Um... A chatter a while back sent me a, uh, a, a YouTube playlist that I want to take a look at called Dog Stuff. And the, the chatter said that this YouTube playlist was actually very helpful and very informative. Teach your dog to listen no matter what. Even if you think they are stubborn, get your dog to calm down with this common sense protocol for relaxation. How to get your dog to behave anywhere. And introducing your dog to the treadmill, dog treadmills, 10-month-old border collie is more interested in other dogs than me. Michael Ellis on how to correct reactivity. And his POC, his last name is Giannis. Golly. <laughs> um, guards property only goes up. This is the anarcho-capitalist dog. This dog is, is ice, basically. Kiko pup is the best. What to train your puppy first? The first thing you want to do when using food is teach your puppy how to take the treat out of your hand. Some puppies won't. Oh my God, look at this beautiful little pupper. Won't find the treat very quickly. So if you're trying to train them something, then it interferes with the training. So make sure that they can find the treat immediately and eat it. On the couch. Also, if you're going to be using treats They're on old. the floor, teach your What? Oh, did she pee in the house again? Oh my God. She literally spends her time outdoors uh, browsing and then comes inside to pee now. And I don't stop. I hate that you guys do Giga Kaya every time she pisses inside the house. It's been getting really fucking bad. I'm going to have to unfortunately start crate training her. Like literally. I mean, you should have done that first. No. Instead of letting her free roam. No, I, I thought that because she was only using the pads... And she was only uh, peeing on the pads. I took the pads off and I'm like what? trying to get her to, uh, I've, I've taken the pads off and I've been, you know, giving her a lot of treats and stuff like that. What? There are no pads. There around. are no pee pads. Yeah, there are no pads. So why are you surprised that she's peeing on the ground? Because, because there are no pads and uh, I'm only training her to pee outside while also simultaneously letting her roam. She's too young. Oh. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We have a whole bunch of them in there. There's so m there's so many pee pads. Yes. Yeah. I think I'm like I'm rushing. Are you letting her outside every 30 minutes after water? Yes. 
She's literally outside, uh, not even every 30 minutes. She's outside for an extended period of time on top of that, too. Um, shouldn't have started on the pee pads. Man, shut up. Oh, my God. There's no problem with the fucking starting on pee pads. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with starting on I think I should put the pee pads outside. That's what I should do. I think I think you just train her first to pee on pee pads, and then when she's older, you can she, start she knows training her to go outside. It's a step by step process. <laughs> Someone in the chat said we are hearing too much. Turn the noise gate back on, which I agree with. I think we should. They can hear your mom. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the noise gate back on, and then. If it's not in your hand, then you missed. You're so violent. Serious? <laughs> <laughs> Attack is the same. What am I supposed to do? Just let it fly around? Okay. The noise gate is what now do you mean? on. You should be out there with her while she pees, treat her, and then bring her in so she knows the outside is proper. You can't leave her to pee alone. There's no reinforcement. Dude, exactly. I oh. am doing that. I'm doing that. I'm giving her a treat and then I'm letting her out, letting her roam afterwards. Okay, listen. Listen. The thing is, when you're streaming, you're not reinforcing good and bad behavior when yes, you're streaming. I am. No, you're not. Because since she's free roaming, she's getting water randomly. So you don't know when she's going to go pee. You should probably give Kaya to chat. You clearly don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I know. No, he, he knows what he's doing. It's just, I don't know how you're doing it while streaming 15 million hours a day. I am getting my mom and Marat to also help out. Yeah. After paying thousands of professional dog training with a stubborn Shiba, p has just trained them to know it's okay to go inside. I mean, I trained, I trained fish with a pee pad. And then after like, you know, once he was a couple months old, I swapped it out. I swapped the pee pads out and because I was it was a mixture. Like if you really, really, really must go, I would let fish go inside and in moments where I couldn't like, uh, you know, control the pee or anything like that. And then I would reinforce it by, uh, you know, giving her treats, giving him treats when he was peeing outside. I didn't even have a yard back then. You didn't have a yard, but it doesn't matter. I no, that's not even true. I there was I was living in a fucking fraternity house, so there was like an outdoor area to pee, and um and that's what I did. She's too young; she can't control her bladder. She still has like ang anxiety pees. She still does excitement pees. It's a normal part of the process. Um, I think like I haven't. If you have any training questions, let me know. I've been training dogs for 10 years now. Five of my own company. Also, I'm in LA. The piss pads are fine. Yeah, pee pads are fine. I don't know why the fuck chatters are like chirping me on it. Test, test. You're not muted. Um, Is it bad if my dogs still use their pee pads? They're adults. I don't know, man. It's for you. If you don't mind your dog pissing indoors, then I guess there's no issue with that. Puppy, to find the treat, I like to use a pointing gesture to help them out if they can't find it. No, Good you're speaking job. too uh, quietly. With young puppies or new rescue dogs. <laughs> Why do you... You get more quiet every time. You literally go, is it too quiet? I talk like this. Uh, yeah. Loud. Be loud. Ah! I don't like to ah. use the lure right near their face to begin with because what happens is you get the dog frustrated and trying to get the treat out of your hand. So I suggest instead luring the dog from a distance up above at first. It really depends on your puppy's personality as to what behaviors you'll work on first. If you have a puppy that's very shy and reserved, I don't suggest working on that game which is no mugging where you get the puppy to back away from your hand and then reinforce. Instead, I suggest teaching that puppy, if they're worried about hands, to touch your fingers and receive a treat for that. So I'll link a tutorial on how to train that you know what? Let's do the puppy pee pad instead. How long should you train your dog? Common newbie errors using food to train dogs. Stop puppy biting with handling games. Stop puppy biting clothes. Capturing calmness. Teach your puppy's name. Teach to go in your crate. Teach go in your crate. I've done that already. 
How to train drop it. Okay, I know all this stuff, but I want to know the peeing. Or what not to do in front of a hey puppy. Hey, everybody. In this video, I'm going to be talking about things not to do in front of your puppy in the first few weeks that you bring your puppy home. Now, the first one I think is the most important is not tying your shoes in front of your puppy the first few days that you have your puppy or dressing and undressing yourself in front of your puppy because you're setting yourself up for a failure. The puppy most likely will become very excited and want to grab at your clothes and it will begin a very bad habit. So instead of doing that, you can either put the puppy away or give the puppy a high value chew if they have to be in the same room as you while you're tying your shoes, or you can train your puppy so someone else is tying their shoes and you can be feeding your puppy treats for simply watching without thinking to grab and start tugging on the shoelaces. Another really important thing to keep in mind is that if you have your puppy outside, you might be thinking that you might want to do a little bit of gardening, and that is in. the worst idea to do in front of a puppy because they oftentimes will copy our behavior that we're doing. So if you start pulling out weeds and digging, your puppy is going to start digging and also noticing the places that you've pulled out the weeds and wanting to eat the dirt and screw around and dig. So instead of doing that in the first few weeks, do your gardening while the puppy is in his pen, or you can reinforce your puppy for watching you, but I really suggest waiting a few weeks till you have a reinforcement history of the puppy listening to you and doing things for you before you expect your puppy to listen to you while you're doing something very exciting and you- Are you bored? Why are you looking at me like that? Looking around. You're giving a look. Around. Are you bored? You want to wait? People are saying yes, we are. I think this is good stuff. You don't want your puppy to join in. I suggest that the first time that you expose your puppy to something that could be exciting or arousing, that you set it up as a training session rather than just leaving everything to chance. Because most likely, if you just let your puppy watch your kids play around with toys, okay, this stuff is like that's silly, but door potty training with potty pads is what we're going to talk about today and then at the end of the video i'm going to explain why using potty pads will not make it impossible for your dog to eventually go potty outside this potty training process has been so damn easy that i have used it on over 20 rescue puppies that i have brought into my home fostered and helped find their forever home so let's start with step one find a dedicated spot to put your potty pads popular spots are by the back door, a bathroom, a guest room, or a laundry room. Pro tips on picking your potty pad spot. Whoa, that was that was an alliteration if I ever heard one, is to make sure it's a spot that the pads can stay in so they're not in the way, but it also needs to be a spot where the puppy can easily access it at all times. And ideally you put it in a spot where you have tile so if there is a mess in and around it, you don't have to worry as much and you're not doing like on laminate flooring. Next, start with four to five potty pads, give or take, depending on the size of your dog. Then I want you to lay them out. Oh, Finn, Finn, are you trying to help? Oh gosh. Finn is showing you what not to do. Do not let your puppy chew on this. Good do boy. a quick training intermission. If your puppy tries to chew on the puppy pads, do not scream or scold and do not make it exciting because if you yell at them, they're going to think it's a game. So what I do is I hold it and I stay completely still. Yes, good jo job. And I had a little bit of accent there. And when he releases, I give him a marker command, which for me is Y-E-S. And you can re reward with a treat. So he learns that, okay, when I let go of the potty pad, I get rewarded. Your pro tip with this is you can use a playpen or a crate to make the area more designated and more specific for your puppy. I like this playpen because it comes with a little built-in door, makes it easy for puppies to go in and out. When you're laying down your potty pads, make sure you overlap them just a little bit and you have at least a few inches outside of the playpen or crate. To start Okay, right off the bat, the fact that she's using like four pads, four giant pads, immediately smart. I've only been using one, and I'm sorry, but uh, Kaya literally never fucking uh, makes it onto the pad. Like, she's always pissing near the pad. Start, you'll want to introduce your puppy to the potty pads so you can walk over to the potty pads with them and let them smell it and reward every time they smell it and show interest. But as you saw earlier, 
do not reward if they start playing with them. Instead, redirect and get them focused on something else and try. Again, only reward when they show interest in it, smell it, but not when they try to buy it. Next step is walk them to the potty pads every single hour. Yes, once an hour, I want you to walk them over to the potty pads. Good job, Finnegan. In addition to that, you're going to walk them to the potty pad area after they eat, sleep, or play every single time. So that means that you're gonna be making a visit to this little dedicated potty indoor area several times a day. And for those of you who are subscribed, you know that I like to get the most bang out of my buck on training. So what I recommend to do as a pro tip is you can use a leash with a harness on your puppy and physically walk them over as if you're leash walking to the potty area every single hour. And that means that you're gonna get to work on leash skills. And yes, you can start that now. If you're potty training, you can start working on obedience training, right? Meow. Hi, dude. And because you're gonna be making so many trips to this area, your puppy is eventually and undoubtedly going to potty in the potty area. And you know what you do when that happens? You get so super excited. As, this is the key, guys, as they are going potty, not after, not before in the middle of it, I want you to give a marker word. That could be a clicker if you're clicker training, or for me, it's Y-E-S, which is what I've trained my dog, even at a young age, to recognize as a positive reinforcement. And then you give him a treat with a command. So for Finn, let's say he's going potty on here. Yes, go potty, good job! And you can give a treat. So you see that I started the reward and the reinforcement as he was completing the action. I know he was just sitting here, but that was just for demonstration. And now a brief message from our sponsor, Thin. Just this would don't yell, don't scold, don't rub your puppy's nose in it. What I do with all the rescue puppies that I have fostered is I simply pick them up and I put them on the potty pad. Most times they still need to go a little bit, so they'll continue going potty on here. A pro tip on this is watch your puppy for signals. A potty signal is typically sniffing the ground or pacing back and forth. If you see that, gently pick them up or whirl them over with a leash and put them on the potty area and wait. The reason I like this playpen is I can close them in. Now, once they go potty on here, you can replace the pad and put a new one on. What I've seen some people do, and it's worked for me some of the time and not other times. Can I ask Jaren? He has three dogs. Yeah, dude, that's right. I should ask Jaren in Turkey how to train uh, a, a dog, even though I've had a dog and I actually perfectly trained him. Um, like, I'm not watching this YouTube video because I don't know how to fucking train a dog. I'm watching this YouTube video to see if there's anything that I'm not uh, aware of that I've been doing wrong or uh, things that I might have forgotten, okay? And I'm realizing that this is only encouraging backseat uh, uh, dog advice, uh, which is making it really fucking annoying. So I'm going to move on from it, especially because hella people are just saying like, oh, this is boring, which is really fucking annoying to me. It is so fucking annoying. There is no other form of content where dickheads will just be like, dude, just turn it off. Just turn it off. Plenty of people have. Why don't you fucking turn it off? You know what I mean? Just turn off the stream. You don't have to sit here and be like, dude, you're so boring. You're boring your guest. You're boring us. I'm sleeping. Like, it's it's very, very, very frustrating.